Hello, I'm Lucy from Bookshanks and I'm here today to talk about this one, Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman. If you've read it, um, do let me know what you thought or if you're planning to read it, I'd love to know. And if you're new to this channel, please do um, stick around, hit subscribe and say hello in the comments below. Would love, um, love to know what you're up to too. So, Pandora, Susan Stokes Chapman. It's a debut. It was out a couple of weeks ago. It's got gorgeous um, painted edges. Love a few painted edges. Um, and yeah, it wasn't a bad one. It was a, it was an all right read. It was good. I was entertained. Um, I was going to call it a Greek retelling then, but actually it's not a Greek retelling. There's been a lot of those around recently, have, hasn't there? And, um, it's more inspired by um, a Greek myth, I'd say, than a retelling of a Greek myth, which I actually think is probably a good thing because um, we must be kind of reaching saturation point on retellings, possibly, maybe. But actually, because it was kind of loosely um, based around the Greek stuff, um, it still felt fresh, actually. I was still on board for it. Um, won't give you any prizes for guessing which myth. Um, Pandora's box. So um, you don't actually really need to know, I think, anything but the bare bones of, um, of the myth to get on board with this book, to know what's going on. Um, and I certainly didn't. You know, I knew as much as Pandora had a box, it was full of the world's evils, so we've got greed, violence, death, destruction, all that stuff, um, disease in the box, um, the lid gets let off, all of this is out in the big wide world, and the only thing that didn't get let out, um, I believe, was hope. Um, and that's kind of all you need to really know for the book. Actually, I mean, I've just told you it, but you probably didn't need to know that anyway, because it probably um, skims over it enough as it is. Now, um, in terms of what the book's like, I sort of thought that this cover had a bit of a YA vibe going on, maybe just a little hint of it, um, but I was wrong. It totally doesn't. Um, it's actually quite literary in the way that it's written, um, which threw me at first. And I took a couple of chapters to sort of get into it. I had to work a little bit harder than I thought I was gonna have to. Not super hard, um, but just that little bit more literary than I was expecting. Um, but I did get into the voice and I did find it um, had a rhythm and it totally built the setting and was appropriate for the story. Um, the story is, um, Dora, Pandora, she's our heroine, um, and she uh, is living with her uncle after being orphaned, um, and she is in their family shop, which sells um, antiques, or once upon a time, it sold antiques when her parents were in charge, but now, actually, it mostly sells forgeries. Her, her uncle has, like, run it into the ground. She crosses paths with Edward, who um, is sort of like the lowly son of um, a groomsman, is that what you call them, um, in ye olde England. Actually, yeah, I should have said, this is about 1799, I think. Um, so she crosses paths with him. Um, and although he is low born, he has high aspirations. He wants to be a member of the Society of Antiquities and has been writing a series of reports about um, you know, antiques and trying to prove his worth and failing to be administered into this club. Now, her father, her father, her uncle's shop takes a delivery um, one day of something that is definitely, um, if not a forgery, something worth looking at. Um, it turns out, unsurprisingly, to be Pandora's box in like Greek vase form, um, not an actual box. But um, there's then this like to and fro between whether the box is cursed, what's happening as a result, why he's got it, what his intentions are, and sort of everything that, you know, is going to fall out from the arrival of this box. The twists and turns of the story, aren't the, and they aren't gasp-worthy twists and turns. They don't have you going, oh, I did not see that coming, but they're more like sleight of hand types of twists and turns where you go, oh yeah, that's clever because the seeds were planted earlier and I didn't see it coming necessarily. I didn't click that those were the things. Um, and although you haven't got these gasp worthy moments, which you don't need really in every book, they keep the sort of the twists as they are 
keep the momentum of the book rumbling forward, which I did like. They're sort of like pitched at an appropriate level for this book. The other thing that I think is pitched at a really good level in this book is the magic. There is like a plausible level of myth and magic running through, um, which I found to be like spot on perfect level because you can kind of argue for each side. Yeah, it's not, it's not magic, stop making up rubbish, or oh, it is magic. Like the plausibility is there just enough that you might think, oh, maybe, maybe it could be. And I find that like an exciting level of magic. I like that level. So that was one really good thing um, that I liked about the book. The setting was also really, really good. I loved how she did that. London, you know, in 17th, 18th century, 1800, that time type of time, it does really come alive and it's super vivid. Um, and you sort of get like the whole spectrum of what is going on in the city from, you know, the really opulent parties down to like the stinking sewers and the docks. And it's a very smelly book in general, actually. There's a lot of reference to stinky things. Um, but actually I like the stinkier side of London. That was the good side. And Susan Stokes Chapman, if you're listening, could we have like a spin-off of all the characters who live down at the dock? I really like that book. That was, oh man, there's gonna be some stories down there. I love it. Um, so the setting was really, really good. Dora actually as a character was really good. I liked her a lot as well. She was really rounded. Um, she was really believable. She wasn't like, um, you know, the perfect, um, good little girl, you know, fitting into her station, doing what she should do. She had like aspirations beyond her station, I guess, to be a jewellery designer and to do things that women at the time weren't really allowed to do. Um, and she's also got like a bit of a sneaky bone in her body as well, which I quite liked, um, you know, pushing the boundaries within her own home. Um, that I thought worked really well. Side note as well, I actually really liked her relationship with the housekeeper, Lottie, um, and the arc that that went on to. That was really satisfying. I liked that a lot. Um, again, be up for seeing more of Lottie um, if the opportunity should arise. Um, Edward, I thought he was the weaker of the two characters. You know, I liked his aspirations. Um, and I liked his, yeah, his drive and his like forward momentum in the novel was satisfying, but he was also a little bit surly. There were times where I wanted to just be like, okay, cheer up a little bit, like have, have a moment of not being miserable, just, just one or two. Um, and also he is staggeringly naive about one certain issue um, regarding his friend Cornelius. I spotted it the very instant that they hit the page. Dora spotted it the very instant she crossed paths with them. And yet he hadn't spotted it for his whole entire life, which I kind of don't necessarily, don't necessarily believe. But you know, on the whole, two really good characters leading their way through the story. You get a couple of other viewpoints thrown in as well, which like mixes it up and adds a bit of, you know, extra intrigue and mystery, which I liked as well and stopped it from getting stagnant um, and like breaking up the predictability. But yeah, generally, generally pretty good. I think, oh, do you know what? Actually, I think there was more than a hint of the miniaturist about this book. So Jessie Burton's The Miniaturist came out, oh God, it was years ago now, six, seven, eight years ago. I don't know. Um, set, well, actually it's set like a hundred years before, I think, um, and it's in Amsterdam, but the vibe is the same. I think people who like The Miniaturist will like this book because you've got that setting, you know, you've got the swishing skirts and the stinky streets, um, and it's definitely got a similar setting. Um, it's got a similar tone of voice, sort of, not ye olde English type of voice, but you know, the sort of formality to the language, um, and yeah, just the voice in general is pretty similar. I think, you know, it's got strong female lead, a young woman, um, also similar. I think, oh, do you know what? They've both got birds as well. <laughs> she, um, Dora's, Dora has got a pet magpie called Hermes, which is a really lovely relationship. I liked that a lot, actually. So yeah, lots of similarities going on there. And I think if you like The Miniaturist, you'll definitely like this one. I've just remembered. The, four, the 
se the sequel to The Militarist, House of Fortune, is out in the autumn. Oh, I can't wait because I love that book. It's really good. Um, I also think that you would like this book if you were into something like The Corset by Laura Purcell. So it's kind of got that little bit of a gothic -y vibe as well, like Victorian, hints of magic, all that stuff going on. So it's like a cross between like The Miniaturist and The Corset. And yeah, definitely a good read. I would say it's like a solid, entertaining, um, you know, you can lose yourself in it kind of, kind of read. And yeah, yeah, one that I would definitely, I would pick her up again. I would do. Um, you know, it's possibly not one that I'm going to remember on my deathbed, but you know, I was thoroughly entertained um, and in the moment. So yeah, Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman. Um, if you've read this book, I would love to know what you thought or if you're planning on picking it up or just, you know, what you've been up to this week, what you've been reading, please do share your thoughts. Um, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.